गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई एम जानकी फ्रॉम पैंटक ई लर्निंग सो टुडे आवर सेशन इज अबाउट दी आईओटी यूजिंग आरडीनो सो थैंकफुल फॉर धनलक्ष्मी कॉलेज फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी so in pantech we offer the courses for different domains like iot ai embedded systems vlsi image processing and network simulations power electronics so electrical vehicles from different uh, domains we offer the minor and major projects as well we take webinars and internship classes so today's our topic is about the iot with arduino so first you can know some basics of embedded systems so what is an embedded system so first a system is nothing but the all the units assembled together to do some specific task so what is an embedded system means it is a it is a combination of the software and hardware using some mechanical components to do some specific task so we use the software and hardware and and we do some mechanical task some we perform some specific task following set of rules so in embedded systems we deal with hardwares like processors controllers sensors we interact with the sensors and use some controllers like arduino 8051 8056 microcontrollers arm processor and arm controller node mcu jets and nano different processor controllers we use in embedded systems we interface with these controllers with the sensors and with the actuators we get the output so what is a microprocessor and a microcontroller so what is microprocessor a microprocessor is like a single ch semiconductor chip it's a small chip where all the peripherals will con uh, all the units are present like it acts like a cpu so it consists of some arithmetic logical unit and execution unit so in microprocessor we consists of registers data and a alu and interrupters so we externally add the some peripherals to it like ram rom other chips some memories we add give some external memory and input output ports so microprocessor examples you know, so this microprocessor used for some data processing logics and controlling is in on a single integrated chips so it has some small number of integrated chips circuits so this process contains the arithmetic logic and controlling circuitry to perform the functions of a computer central processing so in microprocessors are good at multitasking they are the heart of the embedded system for computers okay so this microprocessors are like the power is mostly dissipated as heat energy so this conversion to heat energy is a function of the size of the wires and transistors we use so the frequency of the processors so here when the transistors gets smaller the depletion region also gets smaller so the current leakage to transistor is like off and on is very off 
so what is a microcontroller microcontroller consists of a pro already a processor is inbuilt in that rom ram timer some phase lock loops serial bus control input output ports other memory chips already inbuilt in the microcontrollers we cannot we, we, we will not another add externally we will not add the any peripherals to the microcontroller but for microprocessor we will externally add some input output ports so what is uh, disadvantages and advantages of microprocessors So this microprocessor is a general purpose electronic processing device so which can be good at programming at uh, doing some number of tasks like mobile phones use so in multitasking so it is good at multitasking and it very has compact size the size is also very compact size and they also work at very high speed they consume very low power and they work at high speed so it is very portable and it's very reliable It has very less heat generation, so the microprocessor is very versatile. So we how we measure the speed of the microprocessors? So this microprocessor is the speed which is measured basically in the hertz. So in a minimum, a microprocessor is measured at the speed of three giga uh, gigahertz. So gigahertz is capable of performing the three billion tasks per second. so this microprocessor is that quickly can move the data between the memory location so maybe between various memory locations this microprocessor quickly move the data so it can also have some disadvantages of microprocessors so the main disadvantages of the processes is they are overheating physically you know, even though you can observe in the mobile phones so it's a due to overheating it may affect the chip so the main disadvantages is overheating physically so this microprocessor are based on the machine language so the cost of the process is also very high overall cost okay there some large size of uh, pcbs are required for assembling all the components so some, there are some also disadvantages of this so this process is also have some limitation of the data the data we send uh, limit has some data for the limit data so this microprocessors have no internal peripherals like ram rom input output devices other chips we can have to add them externally to the processors so the main use of processors is they perform some arithmetic and logical operations like adding including adding subtracting transferring number numbers from one area to another area like comparing the two numbers it acts like a central processing unit on a logical chip okay so now can know about microcontrollers and briefly so generally microcontrollers are used to do a specific task so this processes are good at multitasking this microcontrollers are only do a specific task so all the units assembled together to do some specific task this microcontrollers also a semi single chip car it's a small chip size It's like a very we have a idea of VLSS integrated chips. So this microcontroller contains one or more CPUs. So this processor also part of a microcontroller. So microcontrollers may contains one or more processors, along with some memories and programmable input output peripherals. So a microcontroller is embedded inside a system to control a singular function in a device. So how does this microcontroller works is? So this microcontroller is a embedded inside of a system to control a singular function in a device. So it does this by interpreting data it receives from its input output peripherals using the central processes. So the temporary information whatever the temporary information that the microcontroller will receive is stored in the data memory. so this processor is access it and uses the instructions to store it in the program memory to decipher and apply the incoming data so then it will use some inter input and output peripherals to communicate and enact the appropriate action 
so these microcontrollers are used in a uh, wide range of array of systems and devices so they are often utilize multiple microcontrollers that work together within the device to handle their uh, respective tasks so you can take some example like a car might have many microcontrollers so for example you can take one car so the car might have many microcontrollers so a car works on many controllers like uh, the controls various individual systems within it such as anti locking braking system traction control fuel injection suspension control so different controllers to apply a brake one controller used to so for different purpose some controllers are there how this the work is how all the microcontrollers communicate with each other to inform the correct actions so some might communicate with more complex uh, central computers within the car so the uh, communication there is a communication between the microcontrollers to send and receive the data using some input output peripherals and they process this data to perform some designated tasks so what are the elements of this microcontrollers first is processor so what are the microprocessor we discussed this is a part of the microcontroller cpu is a main part of the microcontroller so it's like a brain of the device it processes and responds to the various instructions and the directs to the microcontroller's function so whatever the processor how that works is like it processes the data and responds to the given instructions like this involves some basic uh, performing some arithmetic law, arithmetic like calculations uh, multiplication subtract subtraction addition all this calculation purpose he uses okay and for logical operations input output operations so it also performs the data transfer operations we communicate the commands to other components in large embedded systems so what is memory so memory is like a microcontroller's memory used to store the data the kind of memory used to store the data that the processor uses whatever the uh, data received by the processor is stored in the memory so and it used to respond instructions so the uh, the microcontroller's memory is used to store the data data that processor receives uh, then it is used to respond the instructions that is being programmed to the car programmed so it will uh, respond to the given instructions by the processor so generally a microcontroller has two memory types like a program memory and a data memory so in my, my microcontroller we have two types like a uh, two types of memory types like program memory and data memory so what uh, what the program memory will do is whatever the long term information is there some long term information some about the instructions that a cpu carry out so processor has some instructions a long carrying instruction instructions that will be stored by this program memory so program memory is a non volatile memory meaning like it holds a large amount of information at a time without any needing a power source so what is the data memory so you know microcontrollers two types memories right program memory is like a non volatile memory so this data memory what will do is it requires a you know, temporary data storage so by the instructions are added to it so the data holds very temporarily in the data memory so in this the we have to give some power source to this data memory whereas in program memory we need it holds a large amount of information without any power source okay input output peripherals input output ports okay. so the input output devices are the interfaces for the processor to uh, interface like uh, input we give output we get by the whatever the information we uh, receive in the input will be processed and it will be given in the output we get in the output so this uh, how this interface with the input output of the processor to outside world is the input ports will receive the some information and they send it to the processors so how they send the information in the binary data in the form of binary data the input ports will send the information to the processors so the processor receives this data and sends some necessary instructions to the output devices so the executes the task externally to the microcontrollers so we also have some other supporting elements of a microcontrollers 
So these all are the inter microcontrollers and processors. You can see Atmel AVR, AV, AV, ATX Mega, Arduino ARM processor 8051, PIC uh, 18F8778. All these are the different microcontrollers. So these are the applications you can see here robotics, in cars, in washing machines, in TV machines, in mobile phones, laptops, multimeters different purposes we use is microcontrollers in hospitals you can see the different applications okay so where we use this microcontrollers Yeah, so there are so many applications of microcontrollers. So microcontrollers are used in multi, uh, multiple industries and applications, including in homes and home applications, household needs, building automations, manufacturing, robotics, automotives, lighting, some smart energies, industrial automations, communications, and Internet of Things we use this microcontrollers. So one very specific application of a microcontroller is it uses a digital signal processor so frequently incoming the analog signals come with a certain level of noise so analog signals will have certain level of noise so this noise in the context means very we get the ambiguous values so analog signals the values we get now that are the values are ambiguous that cannot be readily translated into a standard digital values so a microcontrollers can use its adc and dac to convert the incoming noise analog signal into an outgoing digital signal so in embedded systems, we deal with the sensors. Uh, we have we interface with the sensors, controllers, and processors, and actuators. So whatever the sensors we are in, sensors are used to send some data. So you have an idea of sensors like sen all sensors will act as a input devices. So the sensors will collect some information from the physical environment. It's like an input device. They sense the input we give and they convert into electrical signals. These electrical signals are given to the microprocessor and controllers okay so if we have analog signals like we have some analog sensors and digital sensors so what is analog sen uh, sensor digital sensor so if from physical uh, whatever the readings are, are like a continuous signals are considered as analog signals and digital format is like square waves zeros and ones so discrete data so whatever the we want to convert this analog to digital we use some adc converters as well digital to analog we use dac adc and dac some adxl 3008 we use some uh, adc com, okay to convert the incoming noise analog signal into the outgoing digital signal so the simplest microcontroller facility is the different operations of electromechanical systems in everyday life such as micro ovens refrigerators mobile devices, some video gaming systems, televisions, lawn water systems. They are also some common in office machines such as uh, in office purpose also use. The smart meters, security systems uses microcontrollers. These microcontrollers are basically a small scale computer. So they are consists of generalized programs like inputs and outputs. So this all these components are combined in embedded systems in the system. So we add some inputs and output ports to it like oscillators, some AD, like AD converters. So we, for memory storage we use RAM and ROM for this. So this all are inbuilt in the microcontrollers. So what is the difference between this microprocessor and controllers? So these microcontrollers are less expensive as compared to processors. So they already have an inbuilt in RAM.
So Arduino, Arduino is one type of a microcontroller. So Arduino is like an open source electronic platform. So it is very easy to use for hardware and software. So this how these Arduinos are useful is these boards are able to read the inputs inputs and give the outputs like uh, from light from they have some different sensors like light sensor. So they read the inputs in an analog way or digital. So we get an output in there. For example, we get a Twitter message. So it will turn it into an output, activating a motor, turning an LED. So whatever the analog signals we have now, they receive these these inputs and they convert into some output. So we are sending a set of instructions to the microcontrollers on the board. So these Arduinos are used to sense the environment by receiving the input from variety of sensors. So we have two types of sensors, analog and digital. So it will affect its surroundings by controlling lights, motors and other actuators. So what is an actuator? So these actuators are used as outputs. All sensors are inputs and these actuators are used as outputs. They convert uh, this electrical energy into the mechanical energy. So why we choose Arduino? We have some different controllers like PIC controller, 8051 microcontroller, different controllers we have. So why we choose Arduino is like it is very inexpensive. So the programming languages are seen as a main obstacle. So we can simply write in embedded C. So this Arduino C is a greatly simplified version of C++. So we have different languages like C, C++, Java, Perl, all this. But we use embedded C is, is, um, is taken from the C language. So these are the different types of the Arduinos. Arduino RS232. So this Arduino RS232 is it only used with male pins. So we have male pins, female pins, female to male pins. So we have Arduino Decimia, Arduino Dumielno, Arduino Uno, Arduino Uno SMD R3. Arduino Vian Arduino, these are the different types of Arduino, Micro Arduino, Mega Arduino, Arduino Pro, like this Arduino Pro is used without the USB, Arduino Mega, we also have Arduino Lily Pad, Arduino Robot, so these are the different versions, uh, different types of Arduinos, Arduino Ethernet, we can also connect with without Wi-Fi module, we can also connect to the Ethernet to this, Arduino Duo, Arduino Yun, all these are the different types of Arduino boards. So you can know we mostly use this Arduino UNO projects. So this Arduino UNO you know, was invented in 2010. So it, it uses the Atmega328 microcontroller. So Arduino is a processor a controller. So Arduino is a controller. So it has pins are in three groups. Like total we have 14 digital pins like a general purpose input output pins. So these 14 digital pins we can use it as a input or an output. Like we can connect some sensors as a digital pins and as well as we can LEDs, motors, all these also use as outputs. <coughs> so we have six analog pins. Okay, A0 to A5 are analog pins. So we can connect up to 0 to 255 sensors. Okay, outputs from 0 to 1025 outputs you can support. <coughs> we also have a common ground and power pin. As well in the 0 and 1 pin is considered as a the 0 to 14 are digital pins from the 0 and 1 pin is used as a TX RX serial communication purpose for transmitting the receiving serial communication purpose we use these pins. So these are the specifications of that. So it uses a regulator of 7005 but supports from 5 volts by 3 it have power of 5 volts to 3.3 uh, 3 volts it uses. So we have a P, uh, pulse width modulation pins like uh, 3, 5, 9, 10, 11 uses a pulse width modulation pins. So we have many more communication pins like it has more memory. So we use 3 protocols in Arduino. SPI protocol, URT protocol, I2C protocols. 
so this URT protocol pin is zeros and ones for receiving and transmitting the data in a serial communication way. So these are the advantages of uh, Arduino microcontrollers. So they are very low cost. You can enter in any you can use it in the robotics. So there are two main benefits of these Arduinos. Like it use a community purpose for extensive online library resources. We can use this. So these are the sensors versus actuators. So we have some different sensors like temperature sensors. So these temperature sensors will detect the heat, some temperature. So this sense, this sense is a uh, detected signal to the controller center. Some processor will use. Yes. So this control center sends to the spring uh, command sprinkler. A switch it can take. So the sprinkler turns the turns on and puts the out flame. So if you use some relay here, like a switch. So these actuators are like a DC motors and all these convert this me mechanic electrical energy into the mechanical energy. So this IoT with sense uh, Arduino. So with the most top sensors we use in IoTs like accelerometer sensor like MEMS, so proximity sensor, IR sensor gas sensor, temperature sensor, chemical sensor, smoke sensors, motion detector sensor. These all are some top sensors we use in the IOTs. So this IR sensor used to uh, detect the any obstacles and persons using uh, infrared waves. So same this gas sensor works on the like any for alcohol or any poisonous gases for detecting the poisonous gases we use this gas sensors. So these are the different common sensors like color detecting sensor, gas sensor, LDR, water flow sensor, some soil moisture sensor for predicting the dry and wet conditions in the soil. So these are the outputs to contain actuators. This is a common actuators we use like DC motors, DC gear motors, RC servo motor, stepper motor, BLDC motor smart servo motors and harmonic drives these are the common actuators we use with Arduinos so common difference between these uh, sensors and actuators so the sensors will take some physical <laughs> The sensors will take some physical input and it will convert into the electrical signals. So this what this uh, sensors will do is the sensors will take the physical input and it convert that input into the electrical signals from the environment like you can take uh, some DHT level sensor, temperature sensor is there. The temperature level sensor is used in weather monitoring conditions. So it will take the weather predictions and weather uh, it will sense the weather, temperature of the weather and it will convert into electrical signals. So this actuators will do these electrical signals and convert into some physical output, some mechanical energy. Okay. So it generates information about the environment. The sensors will generate the physical environment. What is happening in the environment? It may be a pulse sensor. Pulse sensor used to know our pulse, heart rate. Like that, they collect some information about the environment. What this actuator will do is it will also uh, it will accept the command and performs a function. It will accept the command given by the controller and it will perform a function uh, so this is a sensor is placed at the input port of the system we play at a, the sensors will act as a input ports so this actuators is act as a output ports so the sensors will generate the electrical signals and this actuators will generate some mechanical energy in the form of heat or motion So this is the Arduino software, we use Arduino IDE. So use Arduino IDE 1.8.1.19. 1 okay. So after downloading we get this page. So the code we write in this Arduino is called as a sketch. 
so first you have to verify this code and I have to upload to the controller so what is comments comments can be used anywhere so this comments will not affect the code this is just for helpful understanding the code purpose use this comments so these are the operators and operator or operators these are used to assign some value equal signs are used to assign a value and comparing the values what is variables and declaring the variables so we have basic variable types like a boolean integer character so how to declare a variable so we have boolean type we give the boolean variable name so integer type we give int variable name so character we give char string is nothing but collection of the characters so string name it's hello world like this So this is a code processor for this uh, Arduino IDE, we use embedded C. First we have a global variables, we assign the variable. So LED pin 1 is connected to 10th of the digital pin. So this is an example code. So first we declare the variables, like integer, char, like that. So using the numbers, so it is an int function. So void setup function, this void setup is used for some pin mode connections and pin setup connections. So this LED pin is the output. So we write in a capital C. Oh, so he, this void setup is used to declare the some input and output connections in a setup functions, pin mode connections. Okay. So void loop. This void loop is an automatic loop. It's a repetition of a code. So for working principle, working purpose, we we mention this void loop. So void setup with serial communication. So we in void setup we write the some serial dot begin. This serial dot begin is used for some baud rate. So this particular example you can take see here. So initialize the digital pin as a output. Pin 13 is considered as LED. So it is the 13th, 13th pin in the Arduino. So we write it as pin mode 12 output. So serial dot begin 9600. So this is a baud rate of a, a serial communication baud rate. So, it uh, baud rate is nothing but the number of bits transferred per second. So, how many signal units per second it is transferred? So, in void loop, we use if else statements. So, to read the state of the push button value, like uh, first we read the digital read, we have two types digital read and log read. So in inputs we will read the data, in outputs we write the data. So you have connected a digital signal, digital sensor, we use digital read. And comment lines is for our understanding purpose, like if push button is pressed or not. So if the pin is high, that LED will on. So it will be a high, else the LED will be off. So this is a digital write working function. So we have some basic repetitions. So in uh, loop, void loops, we have different loop functions we use, like a while loop, for loop, nested loops, and loop control statements. So in void loop, we have digital write and delay. We give one delay time, like one thousand is equals to one millisecond. So in while loop we give count, no, so count is less than 10, so the action code goes here, like uh, uh, 
so this is about some embedded systems now how we use embedded systems with iot so iot is a nothing but a cloud format for uploading the sensor data to the iot so how this iot works is the communication between the two devices so machine to machine communication without the help of the humans so it's a communication between the two devices without the help of the humans so we use some different platforms like teamspeak azure all these cloud platforms we use which related to iot so we have some number of applications of iot we use it in machine learning algorithm machine learning so in machine learning we mostly use the predictions like weather prediction stock <coughs> prediction like uh, different types of predictions we use in machine learning so how we uh, relate this um, iot with machine learning so whatever the data, cloud we stored the this iot used to interface with the clouds and the cloud uh, with the sensors with embedded systems how we related iot with embedded systems is we collect some data from the sensors it will be stored in the cloud so this cloud data whatever the data you stored it will be downloaded in the excel format so the data which is we have collected it in a set uh, tested and trained set this we apply some algorithms to it so in this algorithms we predict the future data so in this purpose we use iot So we can discuss again Arduino. So this total we have A not two, A five, six pins we have in analog signals and fourteen pins in digital signal. Digital pins we have. Okay, we have one power source and one USB, one USB port. So these are some basics of Arduino and IoT. So use TingSpeak platform for uploading the cloud data. It is one of the platform for students who are doing some projects. So we use some different platforms like TingSpeak Azure. So TingSpeak is a IoT cloud platform. So all these cloud platforms are paid platforms. You have to pay for the cloud. You have to pay for these clouds. So TingSpeak allows us uh, approx uh, four. Uh, you can do four projects to upload the data. Okay. This TingSpeak is IoT cloud platform where you can send some sensor data to the clouds. So you can also analyze and visualize your data with some MATLAB or other softwares. You can also use some uh, another your own applications in it. Okay, let me see. So this thing, uh, thing speak includes some web services like API and let's say you collect your and store the data in a cloud for developing some IoT applications. It works with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and MATLAB. It also works with all kind of programming languages. Okay. So after we uh, in TingSpeak after creating the channel, we can upload this uh, sensor data to this. We can see in this way field one and field two. So in this way we can see the temperature and humidity values of the DHT level sensor. So by um, minute 
a second by second the uh, the graph changes here you can see the changes in the sensors from my own mobile phone so use some different controllers in node mc or arduino and with arduino ide so hope everyone fill the upload everyone fill the link attendance form so then you will receive the certificates so please everyone fill this form so then only you will receive the certificates so thankful for everyone for supporting to the end so everyone please fill this attendance form Thank you. 